Wow. I mean, it's pretty incredible standing on this stage because it's been a while since I've been here. Past time, I think the last time I gave a speech on this very stage was probably around five or six years ago when I was actually the student body president here at Harker. And I was actually hosting the annual talent show. I'm not really here to talk about my student council tenure. What I wanted to talk to you about today is something different. And what I wanted to do is share a few lessons with you about my journey from taking a side project at Stanford into a fast growing technology company. So how many of you here have actually heard of DoorDash? <laughs> wow. That's a lot more than I expected. What I wanted to talk to you about today is related to my journey from taking a side project at Stanford into DoorDash. And it sounds like a lot of you have heard of DoorDash, but for those of you who haven't, DoorDash is an on-demand logistics company seeking to allow you as a customer to be able to order from local merchants within 45 minutes. And the goal there is that with this software logistics platform that we're building out, that we can eventually allow you to get delivery, not just restaurants, but really from anywhere. So that's DoorDash in a nutshell. Now I wanted to share with you three lessons that I've learned throughout the past couple years of my journey in building out DoorDash. So let's get started. Lesson number one, do things that don't scale. Now, that might seem pretty obscure or pretty vague to a lot of you out here, so let me illustrate this story by talking to you about how DoorDash got started. And this was back in beginning of 2013 when me and my co-founders, we actually already had talked to hundreds of small business owners throughout the Bay Area. We went from downtown Mountain View to Palo Alto to San Jose, pretty much everywhere across the South Bay. And that was really interesting for us because we ended up hearing from a lot of these small business owners that delivery was a really big problem for them. But we just weren't quite convinced that this was something worth working on. So what we ended up doing is we hacked together a website in less than an hour, and we called it Palo Alto Delivery. The reason why is as Stanford students, we figured for people in the area searching for food delivery in Palo Alto, that you know paloaltodelivery.com would show up somewhere near the top. So let me show you actually what that website looked like. It's pretty much at the bottom you see there's a couple of restaurants, and it's really just a bunch of PDF menu links. And in the middle, you see that there's a big phone number, and that was the only way you could contact us. And that phone number ended up just being a Google Voice number that forwarded to all of our personal cell phones. <laughs> and I'm sure if I asked you today, come up with an on-demand delivery app. I don't really know what you'd come up with, but I'm pretty sure you wouldn't come up with that. I'm sure you'd come up with something much more polished, a lot less janky. But for us, this was perfect. We were just trying to see if people even wanted this thing. And one hour after we launched the website, we actually got our first phone call. So from when we started to build the website to when we got our first customer, took less than two hours. And that's the power you have when you're small. You don't need to worry about a large existing user base. You don't need to worry about a large team that you need to get on the same page with you. But really, when you're small, you can just build. And you can do unscalable things like this and you can do it in a way where you can just learn as much as you can. 
And so that's what I mean by doing things that don't scale. And so let me walk through with you all here today what that product actually looked like. First, talking about our hours. We were open weeknights from 6 to 9 p.m. After all, we were Stanford students at the time, so we had class during the day. And on the weekends, I mean on the weekends, come on, we had parties to go to. <laughs> but anyway, funny unrelated story here is one of our very first employees who ended up joining us when we became DoorDash, he actually knew about us during our Palo Alto delivery days. And it was a very interesting surprise for him when he visited our website. He found that we were closed for that week because all of us were on spring break. So you could tell we had very limited hours back then. But to go back to the actual product, so what happened when you called that Google Voice number? In the back, one of us was a dispatcher, where that person's job would be to take the phone call from the customer, jot it down in a Google spreadsheet, and subsequently place a pickup order at the restaurant. And the rest of us were delivery drivers. And when you think of building out a technology company, being a food delivery driver doesn't really come to mind. But for DoorDash, that's what we needed to do. And that's another thing about doing things that don't scale, is that it allows you to become an expert in your business. The founding team, we did the first couple hundred deliveries ourselves. And we learned a lot during those times. One night, actually, one of, there was one night where all of my co-founders actually had class that evening. So that night, it was just me. So what I had to do that night was take phone calls from customers while writing down the orders on a napkin because at the same time, I was delivering other orders. And that's really hectic. But you can imagine that doing those sorts of things really helped me understand the nuances of building out a delivery logistics company. So to, ref to reflect on this first lesson, I would say there's three takeaway points here. First is doing things that don't scale allows you to move really quickly. So you should use that as an opportunity to learn as much as you can. Second, it allows you to become an expert of your business. And third, something that I actually didn't mention is that doing things that don't scale is an essential part of how companies actually get started. A lot of people think that building a company, it's all about having that great idea. But that great idea is going to take us all the way. But that, that's, that's actually not true. All companies from the beginning require a lot of legwork to get off the ground to turn that idea into something special. And DoorDash is certainly no different. So that's my first lesson. Second lesson, don't be attached to your plans. And I have a few stories I want to share on this front. Uh, first one's actually around the time in which we actually became DoorDash in that first summer of 2013. So heading into that summer, during the spring, we existed as Palo Alto Delivery at this time. I was still doing delivery orders pretty much every night. And actually heading into that summer, I actually already had plans for an internship at a well-regarded startup. And this was a very exciting opportunity for me in a couple of ways. One, had the opportunity to work with a co-founder of Facebook. Two, got to live in San Francisco. For people my age, you don't know, it's really exciting. Three, it was a well-paying opportunity. So I'm sure you can see how this was something that I was very excited about. And in fact, it was something that I was looking forward to for the entirety of the academic year. But on a whim, one day, me and my co-founders, we decided to apply to a startup accelerator program called 
Y Combinator, which short for YC is basically a program that lasts three months throughout the summer. And one day, we got a phone call. They said, congratulations, you got accepted into YC. You had the end of today to tell me whether or not you want to accept. So as you can imagine, I had a very interesting choice to make. Did I want to work with a co-founder of Facebook, living in San Francisco, getting paid over $20,000 for a summer? Or did I want to get cooped up in a hacker house with a bunch of dudes I'm already sick of seeing, <laughs> living in Mountain View, getting paid less than $3,000 for the summer? I'm sure you all know what I ended up deciding to do. And that decision has been transformative to my career. The second story I wanted to share on this lesson is actually fast forwarding into the lifetime of the company. By this point, we were actually called DoorDash. We were also in multiple cities by this point. We had a fast growing team. We had a lot of momentum in our growth. So lots of things to be excited about here, except one Friday night, everything went wrong. Meaning DoorDash.com DoorDash stopped loading. In fact, the only thing that worked was our customer support phone lines. So that Friday evening, the entire company, the entire company dropped their work, all their work, and for that evening, they just took customer support calls. Now, clearly, not a great situation to be in. And our engineering team, as we did with problems in the past, we put our heads together and we figured out a solution. Great. Next week, things look fine. However, the week after that, things started to break again. And we went through this cycle where things would break, we would push out a solution where things would look fine for a week. But the week after that, things went back to the original situation. And it came to a point where I had my back against the wall. And we had to make a drastic decision. So what I ended up deciding to do is saying, look, we are going to put the company in lockdown mode for the next two and a half months, where we're freezing all product development, throwing our product roadmap out the window, and we're just going to work on site reliability and infrastructure. And this was a really dramatic decision because we had a lot of interesting product initiatives that would help us differentiate from our competition, that would improve the user experience, accelerate our growth. But at this point, none of that mattered. And the learning here is that in startups, things are pr pretty unpredictable, chaotic. You're never going to be able to anticipate everything that's coming your way. So you should learn to be flexible with your plans. And so that's my second lesson. Moving on to my final and third lesson. It's actually a pretty simple piece of advice. Trust your gut. And this simple piece of advice has actually gotten me a long ways in the past few years. And let me tell you how. First story revolves around when we were trying to build out the team at DoorDash. And me being the CTO, I was very insistent since day one that DoorDash really needed a world-class top-tier engineering team. And the reason why that was is that I believe strongly then, as I still do today, that in order for DoorDash to be successful, we need great software. So I ended up talking to a lot of prospective investors to get their advice on how do you build out a great team. And what I had heard back really surprised me. A lot of the people I talked to, they told me, look, DoorDash, is, it's just an operations business. They told me, DoorDash does not need technology as a core competency to succeed. And this was really surprising to me because 
these people themselves had also built out great companies. And they, I actually really respected their advice. Yet here they were telling me something I didn't want to hear. To be fair, this was around the time in which we were in lockdown mode, where we just desperately needed horsepower to get our company back on track. And we didn't have time to be picky about who we brought onto the team. However, I decided to stick to my guns and insisted that, no, we actually really do need a world-class team here at DoorDash. And that decision has paid off really well for us. Now we have a fast-growing engineering team who scaled up a great foundation for us to get to where we are today and for us to get to where we need to be in the next few years. And even thinking about this advice, it actually applied to me way back in the Palo Alto delivery days when I was a Stanford student. And we were probably only doing maybe five, 10 deliveries a day. I had asked my peers and my classmates, so what do you think of Palo Alto delivery? And the response I got was universal. Every single person that I talked to, they told me, I don't understand why you're doing this. <clears throat> I don't get why you're building yet another delivery service. I don't see what you're doing that's so special. Fortunately, I thought differently. And because I thought differently, and I had the strong conviction, I continued to build out the side project of Palo Alto Delivery into the fast-growing technology company that it is today. So that's my third lesson. To summarize the three lessons I shared with you today, one, do things that don't scale. That allows you to move really quickly, and you should use that as an opportunity to learn as much as you can. Second, don't be attached to your plans. Startups are inherently chaotic and unpredictable, so you're never going to be able to predict everything that's coming your way. And third, trust your gut. You're going to hear advice and opinions from a lot of different people, many of whom you might respect. But at the end of the day, it's up to you to make that final call. And out here today, I see a lot of bright, young, talented people. And I really hope that these lessons that I shared serve as an inspiration for those of you out there who are interested in pursuing the startup world. Thank you very much.